Swift UI lets us attach gestures to any of our views, and the effects of those gestures can also be animated. We get a range of gestures to work with, like tap gestures to respond to taps, or drag gestures that respond to user dragging a finger over a view, and more. Now we'll be looking at gestures in more detail later on, but for now let's try something relatively simple. A card we can drag around the screen, when we let go it just snaps back to its original location. First, original view we'll start with. Delete your starting code, I'm going to add a linear gradient here, and for the colors, I'm going to specify uh, yellow and red. Starting point will be top leading, end point bottom trailing. I'll make that clip to have a frame, width of 300, height of 200, and a uh, clip shape of rect with corner radius of 10, like that. So we get like a card-like view in the center of our screen. And what I want to do is I want to drag that around the screen as the user moves their finger around, which requires three steps. First, we need some state up here to store the amount of their drag. So I'll say at state private var drag amount is cg size dot zero. The size of their drag is zero by default. CG comes from a very old Apple framework called Core Graphics for Drawing. Second, we want to use that size to influence this card's position on the screen. And SwiftUI has a special modifier for that called offset. We can adjust the X and Y position of a view by some amount based on uh, the drag amount. This will not affect other views around it. It just offsets the way it's rendered on the screen, not the way it's positioned elsewhere with other views. You can provide discrete X and Y values if you want to, but you can also, by no coincidence, pass in a CG size to work with it. And so, step two is to add a modifier here, offset by drag amount, like that. Now comes the important part. We're gonna create a drag gesture object and attach it to our card. Drag gestures have two extra modifiers we care about. On changed, let us run some code whenever the user moves their finger, constantly running as they're dragging around. And also on ended, let's run a different closure when they release their finger, ending the drag. Both of these things have a single parameter passed to them, which describes the current drag operation, where it started, where it is currently, how far it moved, and so on. For our unchanged modifier, we're gonna read the translation of the drag, which tells us how far it's moved from the start point. We're going to assign that directly to our drag amount value here. So our view moves along with the gesture on the screen. For the onended modifier, we'll ignore the value entirely. We're setting drag amount back to zero again. And so add this modifier to your linear gradient. We'll do a gesture. Inside there will be a drag gesture. We'll do onchanged will be drag amount equals dot zero dot translation, that's the value being passed in. And on changed, we'll do, oh, on ended, sorry, on ended, we'll do uh, underscore comes in, drag amount is back to dot zero again, to reset drag amount completely. Now if you run the code, you should see we can grab this card and just move it around the screen, like this. And when we let go, it snap back to the middle again, smoothly. So, that far, is working. The card having its offset determined by our drag amount, which in turn is being set by this drag gesture we're moving around with. And now everything works, we can bring that movement to life with some animation. And we have two options here. We either add an implicit animation that'll animate the drag and the release, or an explicit animation to animate just the release. If you want to see the former in action, we've got to add a modifier here to get an animation. We're gonna say, let's animate this whole thing using a bouncy animation, one of the built-in high bounce levels of animation, not super high, but still a spring, uh, with a value attached to drag amount, like this. So add an implicit animation to the whole view. And now when I drag it, it lags behind because it's got that bouncing going on. And when I let go, it will bounce back to the middle like that. Gently overshooting and bouncing back to its correct target, like so. That's doing the implicit animation approach. 
to an explicit animation, we'll remove this thing and instead modify our on-ended code. Here, we're gonna say, actually, I want to set this thing back to zero with animation of bouncy again. But now only the on-ended animation will happen. The dragging will change immediately, but go back to zero will be animated. So I'll press Command R, run it again, and you'll see as I click and drag, it follows my uh, mouse, my finger, immediately. When I release, we get the bounciness. So you get to choose. Do you want both dragging and releasing to be animated, or just one of the two? If you combine the animations with drag gestures and a little bit of delay, you can create some remarkably fun animations without a lot of code. I want to show this off to you. We're going to write the text Hello Swifty Y as a series of individual letters on the screen. Each one with a background color and offset is controlled with some state. Now, in Swift, strings aren't just arrays of characters, but they almost are. They're slightly fancy arrays of characters. So we can get a real array from the string by just saying array with some string inside. It converts the string to a real array. Anyway, let's give that a try now. I'm gonna just delete all this code. Boom. And this too. First things first, let's get our letters. We'll say this is an array with a string, hello, Swifty Y. I'll get the comma, that's, that's what I'll do. Then we'll say, at state private var enabled is false. And again, at state private var, a drag amount is CG size dot zero. How far dragging right now? Inside the view body, we'll make a H stack with spacing of zero. And then loop over all our letters. So we're gonna do a for each of zero up to letters dot count using ID of self. Give me one number coming in. That's the letter position we're trying to read right now. We'll do a text of a string of letters num, like that. Give me H, give me E, give me L, L, O, and so forth. I'll add a little bit of padding around it of five points, a space apart like so. I'm gonna add a font of title, so it's a bit larger on the screen. I'm gonna add a background color here. We'll do, if enabled is true, make it blue. Otherwise, make it red. We'll do an offset attached, attached to our drag amount CG size. Then we're gonna add an animation with a linear animation and a delay. And a delay is tricky. What we want to do is make a double of our number divided by 20 and the value bound to drag amount. So remember, this num will be zero at first, then one, then two, then three, then four, all the way up to the full count of our thing here. So we make that thing here, one and two and three, and divide by 20. So we get a very small delay, but increasing delay as we go through from H, zero delay up to I at the end, the longest delay. Once we have that, we're gonna attach a gesture to the whole thing, so the whole H stack here. We're gonna say the gesture will be a drag gesture again. And when this thing is changed, again, we'll just do drag amount is equal to dollar zero translation. And on ended, we'll do drag amount equals zero enabled dot toggle. So, oops, underscore in, sorry, <laughs> underscore in there. So each letter in our array has its own implicit animation attached. And it's gonna watch drag amount to know what to do with itself. And when I set to zero, they'll all go back to the center again and flip enable to be uh, the opposite way around. Let's give it a try, see how it looks. Hit out with UI, I'm gonna grab the H and drag it around and you get that. It's gonna follow like a little snake because they all have different, different animation delays. Boom, and when I release, they change color and go back to the middle because the uh, enable's changing each time. Again, drag it around and then release it, back in the center they go. So, Swifty Y is doing animations, doing delays, doing toggling, doing dragging, all for us. And the result is simple, but very nice.